All right, so we're now doing the 2012 released free response question number one, part C. So the question says, for zero less than or equal to t less than or equal to 20. So when, you, when I see something like this, I don't read all the less than or equal to. I just look at this and they say, t is between zero to 20, including the endpoints. In fact, a nice notation for that is to write this. t is an element of the closed interval from zero to 20. And that's what they're really telling you. Is this is just the time domain of the problem. And if we look up at our data, unsurprisingly, it runs from zero to 20. Now it tells us that the average temperature of the water of the tub is 1 20th integral from zero to 20 of W of T dt. Now they were very nice to tell you that. They didn't have to tell you that. I mean, you are supposed to know that the average value of F from uh, point A to a point B is one over B minus A times the integral from A to B of F of X dx. That's the average value of any function. So they nicely gave you that. The 20 is the, so the A is zero, the B is 20, and so B minus A is 20. So this formula is just this formula for the average value of a function. Now it says to use a left Riemann sum with four subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate this integral. So now we're going to approximate this integral using a Riemann sum. And then it asks, does this approximation overestimate or underestimate the average temperature and explain your reasoning. So our main thing here is to do a left Riemann sum, a left Riemann sum, with four subintervals. So now when I have some table values and I'm asked to do a Riemann sum, I do not think of formulas for Riemann sums, uh, delta x, f of x sub i, we don't really have to think about that too hard. When I see that I'm uh, asked to do a, a left or right Riemann sum, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just draw that. And what we're gonna see is we're just gonna be able to just draw a bunch of rectangles and simply add up their areas. That's really all it comes down to. So now what I usually do is I'll draw out my interval. I have 0, 4, 9, 15, and 20. Those are my x coordinates. One thing I want to notice about them is that my x coordinates are not even evenly spaced. We're used to seeing this would be, if we went from 0 to 4, we would expect the next one to be 8, and then we expect the next one to be 12, but our spacings are not even even. Now that's all right. We'll be able to handle that with our Riemann sum. So we're going to have 4, we're going to have 9. I'm making these sort of roughly proportional, but they by no means have to be exactly proportional. And you'll see when I get to the y coordinate, which is really our w coordinate, I'm going to be very um, loose with proportionality. So I'm just going to say, oh, 55, I'm going to just put it right there. Now usually I'm going to mark on there what that height is. And then at, x, at t equals 4, W of t is 57.1. So all I know about that is it's a little bit higher than 55.0. I might even exaggerate that distance because difference because I know I need to draw something. 9 is 61.8, so let's put 61.8 up here. I'm not being terribly proportional, just, just getting you know the approximate idea that the function is increasing. And then for 20, I'm going to put 71.0. Now, my job is to make uh, four rectangles. So they have asked us to do four subintervals, and left means they contact the function on the left edge of the rectangle. So the bases of my rectangles are here, 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 and here. Those are the bases of my rectangles. The heights of them, the left edge needs to contact the function. So I'm going to bring my left edge up to here, and then I'm just going to make, that's my first rectangle. All right, my next rectangle, the left edge of it touches at 57.1, and that's my next rectangle. My next rectangle over is at 9, and it touches at 61.8, and that's my rectangle. And my next rectangle touches at 15, and that's my fourth rectangle. So one thing that it, you want to notice about this, since I'm using a left-hand approximation, the left edge of each rectangle touches the point of the curve. That means that this last data point of 71, I'm not even going to use it in this calculation. Now, the next thing that I need to do, since these are my rectangles, and I'm using them to approximate the area, all I have to do is find the area of these rectangles and add them up. So now we really are back to some fifth grade math. And, uh, John LaRosa, please call 4803. John LaRosa, 4803. 
So what we need to do to find the areas of the rectangles is just multiply their base times their height. So for each, for each a rectangle, area is equal to base times height. So um, we could, uh, I guess, be a little calculus-ish calculus about it by saying that this is our, each of our ith rectangles. So this is our a1, a2, a3, and a4. So we can say what a sub 1 is, what a sub 2 is, what a sub 3 is, and what a sub 4 is. That's the areas of each of our four rectangles. So now we just, all we do is apply area formula. The base of this rectangle is 4, the height of it is 55. So that first rectangle, its area is 4 times 55.0. That second rectangle is the, now watch out because the base is varying. The base now is 5 and the height is 57.1, so my second rectangle is 5 by 57.1. My third rectangle, the base of it is from 9 to 15, so that's 6, and the height is 61.8. So I have 6 times 61.8. And then my last rectangle, its base is 5, its height is 67.9, so that's 5 times 67.9. Now, here is the first part of this entire number one question with three parts. Here in the third part, this is the first time where I'm actually happy that I have a calculator to find these areas because um, I wouldn't want to do 5 times 57.1 by hand. So I'm going to go uh, 4 times 55. And of course, you really could total all these up right away. Um, I'll go ahead and show the intermediate step, but a good time saver is you wouldn't have to write out these intermediate amounts, but it doesn't hurt either. 5 times 57.1, that's 285.5. I'll do the 6 times the 61.8. That's, well, let's try doing 6 times 61.8, that's 370.8, and 5 times 67.9, that's 339.5. So now I just add all these up, and uh, well, there's maybe some button saving, but uh, we can just add them up, it won't take too much time. 370.8 plus 339.5, and so I get 1,215.8. So that is, in fact, my left rectangle approximation to this function. Now let's see what else it asks me to do. So we've done this. Oh, and matter of fact, by the way, what we've estimated here, this estimate is approximately equal to the integral from 0 to 20 of w of t dt. Um, but we weren't asked just to find this, we were asked to find this, 1 20th of the integral from 0 to 20. So now we have to say what is uh, the average value of the function, so the average temperature in fact, the average temperature, it says here, is 1 20th the integral from 0 to 20 of w of t dt, and this, this integral is approximately equal to 1 20th of 1215.8. So now we can just take our 1215.8 that we had uh, and just pull that answer and divide it by 20. And it, we get 60.79. So that approximately equals 60.79. Now by the way, we can also take a common sense quick check. This says that the average temperature of the water is 60.79. Let's look at our temperature values that we have. We have some upper, some low and upper 50s. We have some mid 60s and some upper 70s. Does it seem reasonable that the average temperature of the tub should be approximately 60.79? Yes, it does. So that's a good check on our work. Now it says, uh, it says to make a left Riemann sum to approximate this value 
Notice this time it does not ask us to use units and it does not ask us to interpret the meaning. Now, part of the reason is that they told us the meaning. They don't, they don't need to ask us to interpret it because they told us what it means. The average temperature of the water in the tub. That's the meaning in the context of the problem. They told us that, so they're not asking us to interpret the meaning like they did last time because we already know the meaning. They did not ask us to use uh, correct units. It does not say in here to use correct units. Um, however, it certainly would be a good idea to say that our correct units here would be degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the next part of this question says, does this approximation overestimate or underestimate the average temperature of the water over these 20 minutes? So we have to think about whether this is an overestimate or an underestimate. This requires to us to think about our twice differentiable function, which because it's differentiable, does not have any uh, cusps or corners. Um, it's continuous. It doesn't suddenly jump from one temperature to another. It'd be a weird thing for a bathtub to do anyway. So we're thinking about a nice smooth curve. We're thinking about bathtub heating up over over time, it's going to have a nice uh, smooth curve and we're going to use this information they gave us. It is a strictly increasing function. If they had not given us this information that the temperature is strictly increasing, we would not be able to answer this question whether it overestimates or underestimates. So we need to know that it was strictly increasing. That means it never decreases or stays constant. That's the strictly part it means it's also never constant. So I'm going to try and draw uh, an increasing function. You don't really have to draw an increasing function uh, to show this, but it helps. Now, once we draw in this strictly increasing function, what we can see about our estimate is that it's leaving out parts of the area. So I know, in fact, that the area estimate that I got, the 12 point, the 1,000, 215.8 is in fact strictly less than the integral from 0 to 20 of w of t dt. So uh, because area was left out and it was an increasing function. So now I can say 1215.8 is strictly less than. That means it's not equal to. We know it's not equal because there was area left out. The 1215.8 is strictly less than this integral because f is an increasing function. Now this is going to be really critical that we refer to this. We have to refer to the fact that f is an increasing function which was given in the problem. If the function is increasing and we used a left and we used a left endpoint sum. Um, therefore, our final conclusion is that, um, how did they word that? Does this approximation overestimate or underestimate? So, therefore, um, the approximation underestimates. the average temperature. So this is what we need to have for a final sentence so that we're answering this question, does it overestimate or underestimate? The approximation underestimates. Notice I don't say, therefore it underestimates the average temperature. I, you never use the word it in an AP response. We need to say what underestimates the average temperature. The approximation that we just did underestimates the average temperature. Have we explained our reasoning? The explaining our reasoning is when we said that the estimate that we got is strictly less than the actual integral because f is an increasing function and we used a left point sum. And then we have a picture that goes with it, but the picture does not count as you explaining your reasoning. The words count as you explaining your reasoning. So you must write these words that describe what's happening in this picture. Then once you've done that, you've explained your reasoning, we've stated that it underestimates, we've found our approximation, we've given correct units even though they didn't ask for them. And that's part C.